Are you looking for a professional video editing PC capable of handling 4K, 6K, even 8K footage using heavy effects? Maybe you've just reached the limit of your budget video editing PC and you want something to play with the big kids. Well, whether you're a YouTube star or you're working on a professional full-length feature film, we've got an amazing video editing rig that's gonna get the job done for you. Coming right up. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Today we're gonna to go over a professional video editing PC build featuring a Ryzen 9 5900X and NVIDIA RTX 3070. In fact, I've got several of the parts sitting right here on my desk right now. While we wait for the rest of them to come in so we can build this thing very, very soon, today we're gonna to go over the build itself and talk about what are the key components that you're looking for in a professional video editing rig. The graphics card, the motherboard, the CPU, all down the line, the memory especially. Of course, we're still a new channel, so if this is the kind of content that you want, content that really should mash down all the technical mumbo jumbo to give you the best price to performance in your builds, then remember to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you get notified when we go live. It's an absolutely free way for you to get the content and support the channel. All right, with that, let's head into it. So let's talk about the performance of today's video editing PC which comes in at $1,850. Now we're focused primarily on Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve performance, as those are the most popular video editing suites. And I definitely wanna be clear that there's almost no upper limit to the cost of professional video editing PCs. They range from consumer level desktops that I'm gonna show you today, all the way to super expensive HEDT rigs used by major studios. So the $1,850 PC we're gonna build should be considered kind of an entry to professional video editing systems, and it's gonna allow you to work in 4K, 6K timelines with ease, and even work with 8K footage. It's gonna handle just about any effect you throw at it, with the primary benefit of more expensive rigs being just faster speed. All right, let's talk about the processor for today's video editing build. So we're gonna go with the Ryzen 9 5900X. This is, retails at $549 US. Now, believe it or not, AMD did not send me this processor. I had to go out and buy this just like all of you. So I would recommend right now, if, you're, if it's still early days, uh, check Newegg. They're dropping at 7 p.m. Eastern time just about every day. Check their Twitter feed. They post about three to five minutes ahead of time. Find the deal you want and go for it. They're also dropping the graphics cards as well and uh, mostly 5600, 5800Xs, but also quite a few 5900Xs are coming now, not so much of the 5950X. So this processor has 3.7 gigahertz base clock and a 4.8 gigahertz boost clock. It's got significantly more performance than the Ryzen 7 5800X, which is only $100 less, but packs only eight cores and 16 threads. So basically for hundred bucks more, you get 50% more performance, which is a fantastic value. Now you can of course run out and grab the 5950X when it's available. That's a $799 MSRP, 16 core, 32 thread, absolute beast of a processor. And if your time is worth that kind of money, by all means, grab that thing and go with it. I just do want to point out though, in Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna get most of that performance out of the 5900X for just about half the cost. So there really is no beating the 5900X in terms of price to performance if you're on a budget. What about overclocking the Ryzen 9 5900X? Now from recent testing, I've seen that you can really push the 5900X with all core overclocks, and there is a bit of performance to be gained in multi-core applications, especially video editing, things of that nature. I've seen 4.7 gigahertz stable all-core overclocks at about 1.34 volts or so. I would recommend, however, if you want to overclock that you do quite a bit of testing to ensure that it's stable, as the last thing you want, obviously, when you're editing a massive timeline, is to get a crash in the middle of that and, uh, and lose your entire editing session. So I suspect most of you out there who really want to do high level video editing, you just want really, really good stock performance. And that's what I would recommend we stick with here, the graphics card. For video editing, we really only want to get an NVIDIA card. 
While AMD's RX 6000 series is a substantial improvement over their 5000 series, the encoder, the driver support, uh, the third party support platform, and it's aging by the way, AMD update it, you know, it just doesn't really compete with Nvidia's offerings. So if you're primarily a gamer who also wants to do video editing, then listen, there's nothing wrong with getting uh, an AMD RX 6000 series card. But if you are a professional level video editor, professional level, and that's what you do first and foremost with a computer, then Nvidia has an absolute monopoly right now. And I'm hoping the RX 7000 series will begin to change that. Lisa Su in the announcement seemed to indicate that they were still heading in that direction. Come on, AMD, you can do it. <laughs> Break the monopoly. So today we're gonna go with the RTX 3070 eight gigabyte video card. That's this one right here. In fact, we got the gigabyte gaming OC one. And if you wanna know why I picked this card specifically, it's because literally it's the one I kept mashing the button on to try and buy about 37 times before I got it. There wasn't any kind of intelligent choice behind it whatsoever. And it just turns out I happened to get one of the best ones. But frankly, any of the 3070s are gonna be perfectly acceptable for the kind of video editing we're talking about today. It has eight gigabytes of VRAM, which is fantastic. Would love more VRAM, come on Nvidia, eight gigabytes, really? But still, eight gigs is plenty to do 4K, 6K, even some 8K footage handling. If you are primarily working with 8K timelines, that means everything's in 8K, I would recommend jumping up to the 3080 just to get two more gigs of VRAM in there because they have 10 gigs. You're gonna, of course, uh, have you know more to compete with, or you could even jump up to the 3090, which has even more VRAM. If on the other hand, you're mostly focused on 4K with a little bit of 6K footage occasionally thrown in, then you could certainly drop down to the 3060 Ti, which as of this video just launched and seems to be much more available and you get about a $100 discount off the 3070 with not that big a performance drop. Memory continues to be the super hot topic for Ryzen, right? Two sticks versus four sticks. What speed do you wanna get? What cast latency? What's gonna be most cost effective for the performance given the market conditions? Here is the answer. So for the Ryzen 5600X build, we talked about the two sticks versus four sticks. That has to do with dual channel, I'm excuse me, dual rank. Don't confuse this with dual channel. This has to do with dual rank versus single rank. Now, the memory that we're gonna be dealing with today because we're gonna get 64 gigs of it, don't worry. This is all dual rank memory. So you can forget this whole two stick versus four stick thing. We are gonna get plenty out of the memory bus controller. So for this build, in order to get 64 gigs, we can either go two 32 gigabyte DIMMs or we can go four 16 gigabyte DIMMs. Any of those should be dual rank. Even with memory as cheap as now though, it is a significant cost. So when we're talking about the speed of the memory, I'd recommend a 3200 CL16 memory kit or 3600 CL16 or CL18. That's gonna be your most cost effective here. In terms of the kits, because again, these are larger DIMM sizes, you'll often find fluctuations in the market. So sometimes two 32 gigabyte DIMMs are gonna be the most cost effective. Sometimes you'll find a, a four by 16 gigabyte kit. But right now, for this Team Force Dark 32 gigabyte two by 16 kit, you're gonna find that buying two identical 32 gig kits, that's two 16 gig DIMMs in there, is gonna be your most cost effective option by about 15 to 20%, at least of this filming of this video. So this is a kit that I would strongly recommend. In fact, this is very similar to the kit I actually bought for it uh, that's actually no longer available. So I'll leave links to this along with all the other products down in the description. But this is gonna get you 64 gigs of memory buying two of these kits, identical kits, um, and you're gonna get the benefits of dual rank and dual channel. So you're gonna get all the goodness. Let's talk about cooling. So again, hot topic for Ryzen, right? Hopefully you checked out my best cooler series, both part one, where we looked at the best budget and mid-range air coolers, as well as part two, where we looked at the best high-end air coolers, as well as mid-range and high-end liquid coolers. 
So today we're gonna go with one of the coolers that really should have made that first video, but I cut it both for time and already had a lot of Scythe coolers in it, and that is the Scythe Ninja 5. The Ninja 5 is an absolutely amazing mid-range priced air cooler with high-end performance coming in at just $60. So the Ninja 5 provides plenty of cooling both at stock and a good amount of overclocking headroom. If you wanted to go up in cooling for like really extreme overclocking, you could consider any of the high range air or liquid coolers from my best cooler for Ryzen 5000 series. But honestly, for only $60, the Ninja 5 really gives you everything you need for a video editing rig. All right, let's talk about the motherboard. Now, I have a whole video on motherboards. Uh, it's in the card. Feel free to check it out. I will say that there have been a number of pricing changes since I did that. Uh, so there are a couple of boards now I feel are much more competitive than they were when I filmed that original video. So briefly, if you're looking for a board in the range of the Aorus B550 Elite, the Aorus B550 Pro, the B5, MSI B550 Tomahawk, the B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, uh, the Asus Tough Gaming B550, any of those are absolutely fine for what you want. You don't need an X570 motherboard. Uh, for video editing, you're not going to see any real gains out of using PCIe, additional PCIe 4.0 devices, storage devices. So I strongly recommend still the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro AC. Make sure that the, the AC version typically sells for the same price as the non-AC version, so I'm not sure why you just get the regular version. So check that. I will say if you need the uh, front panel uh, USB type C internal header on it because your case has USB type C connectors in front. You can look at getting the Aorus B550 Elite AX V2. That's a lot of letters, isn't it? Anyway, they've released version two of both the Pro and the Elite boards. The Pro has not, version two has not yet hit US shores. I think it is available overseas in other markets. But the Elite AX, that's the Wi-Fi version of this, is available for $169, same price. Only other difference is slightly better VRM on the Pro, slightly better audio on the Pro. Or, of course, you could look at, like I said, the, the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Right now, this would be the buy. It's on for $150. This sale's about to expire. At MSRP, I don't really feel like this board competes with it because it really lacks a lot of high-speed USB connectivity that the other boards have. Same with the B550 Tomahawk. That's my big problem with those two boards. MSI just really just cheaped out on the, uh, the connectivity, I think because they added the uh, front panel USB-C, but still, come on, MSI. So we're gonna go today with the B550 Aorus Pro AC. Fantastic motherboard, great audio. You may not need it if you have an external DAC, but again, I'd strongly recommend this one. Quick alternative here. If you need Thunderbolt 3 support, and I know some of you do, then the Gigabyte B550 Vision D is the way to go. MSRP's $260. Currently, as of the time of this video, sold out everywhere, but it will come back in stock, and I'll include links down in the description below. All right, let's talk about storage. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here. In terms of storage for video editing, I would just recommend we get a prosumer level drive. We don't need to go crazy. We don't need a PCIe 4.0 drive. We are not going to see the value out of it. I would recommend you buy more storage rather than faster storage uh, <clears throat> once we get the Kingston A2000 here. This is a fantastic one terabyte drive. I also mentioned it in my best uh, drive for, for gaming. Obviously, we're not just gaming with this. We're video editing. But for $96, this is Micro Center. You may have a Micro Center near you. That's, this is a great deal. If not, typically available for just a little over $100, sometimes a little bit less than that. This is a great drive. If you do want to move up to a little bit more of the, of the professional level, right now at least, uh, the ADATA XPG SX8200, God, I hate how they name this stuff, the Pro, one terabyte drive. Great drive, it's on for $120 on Black Friday, actually. I was able to pick up a couple of these for less than 100 bucks each. Uh, so we're actually going to use this in the build, but you're not going to be able to get that price. So I wanted to give you uh, an equally great drive uh, for a decent price, and that's this. Don't go out and spend a lot of money on the speed of the storage. Spend the money on the size of the storage. You're going to need a lot of it. 
We aren't going to go over where to store the footage itself. You know, a, a lot of folks prefer to work off of larger external hard drives so they can pass them to other, other folks. Other people want to work on networked attached storage devices, NAS devices. That's a whole topic for another video. You probably, if you're a professional or you're at that level, you already have a system worked out. I'm not going to change your system. I'm just going to give you a tower, a, an actual PC, to be able to implement it. Let's round this out very quickly with the case and the power supply. Uh, the case, I just went with a Fractal Design Meshify C, the white. Newegg's had this on sale for about $70 for a while. It's a fantastic case to build in. It looks phenomenal. Uh, what else to say about it? Spend about $60 up to $100 on the case. Get whatever you like. This one comes with two included fans. Make sure you have enough airflow in this case. You don't want this thing really banging when you've got the headphones on. You want to be able to hear the crisp audio and pick up any pops or anything like that so you can fix them. You don't want to be fighting your, your tower uh, in order to hear it. So get something with good airflow. Get something that's going to be somewhat quiet. In terms of the power supply, we went with a Roswell Capstone 750M. This is a gold, 80 plus gold rated unit, and it's rated in tier A of the Linus Tech Tips PSU Cultist power supply list. That means it's a highly rated and reviewed unit using high quality components. You don't have to worry about this thing blowing up and taking some of the components with it. Again, we're using an RTX 3070. That's a pretty power hungry piece of equipment. We want to make sure that we get an appropriate level PSU. And I would recommend something at a Linus Tech Tips list that's either in the A tier or the B tier for this. I went with the A tier because you're spending almost two grand, spending another 25 bucks on a decent power supply, right? This is a semi-modular one. We size the power supply at 750 watts because when you put it in a PC part picker, it drew almost 500 watts there. What I like to do then is just add another 50% to it. So half of 500 is 250. Add those together, you get 750 watts. Now you know how to size a power supply. And I'll leave a link to the PSU Cultus tier list down in the description, as well as links to all the products. That's gonna cover our professional video editing build. If you got value out of this, please remember to like the video. And of course, we're gonna be putting this thing together, so you don't wanna miss that. Click subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when that goes live. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next one.